The history of the first president of Mozambique, Samora Machel. Hello, the explorers. Welcome to another interesting video presented to you by the explorer, and thanks for watching. In this video, we shall take you down memory lane to look at the history of the first president of Mozambique, Samora Moises Machel, born 29 September 1933, was a Mozambican military commander and political leader. A socialist in the tradition of Marxism-Leninism, he served as the first president of Mozambique from the country's independence in 1975. Marshall died in office in 1986 when his presidential aircraft crashed near the Mozambican South African border. The life of this leader is simmered with a lot of intriguing factors, which have led him to be regarded as one of Africa's most fascinating former leaders. Well, let's wear our nosy caps on and go digging into the history of Mozambique's first president, Samora Moises Machel. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Machel was born in the village of Madagoa, Gaza Province, Mozambique, to a family of farmers. He was born under Portuguese rule, which was a very demeaning time for most black Mozambicans. But however, Machel's father was a successful farmer by the 1940s. Machel attended Mission Elementary School, and in 1942, he was sent to a Catholic mission-run school in the town of Zongene in Gaza province. After completing the fourth grade, in 1954, Machel started to study nursing in the capital city of Lorenzo Marquez, today Maputo. Unable to complete formal training at the Miguel Bombarda Hospital in Lorenzo Marquez, he got a job working as an aide in the same hospital and earned enough to continue his education at night school. He worked at the hospital until he left the country to join the Mozambican nationalist struggle in neighboring Tanzania. Marshall was attracted to anti-colonial ideals and began his political activities in the Miguel Bombarda Hospital in Lorenzo Marquez, where he protested against the fact that black nurses were paid less than whites doing the same job. Marshall left Lorenzo Marquez when a white anti-fascist warned him that he was being watched by the Portuguese political police. He slipped across the border and made his way to join Frelimo in Dar es Salaam through Swaziland, South Africa, and Botswana. In Botswana, he hitched a lift on the plane carrying recruits of the African National Congress of South Africa to Tanzania. Impressed by the young Mozambican, a senior ANC official, J.B. Marx, bumped one of the ENT recruits off the flight to let Marshall on. In Dar es Salaam, Marshall volunteered for military service and was one of the second group of Frelimo guerrillas sent for training in Algeria. After Frelimo launched the independence war on 25 September 1964, Marshall soon became a key commander, rising rapidly up the ranks of the guerrilla army, the FPLM and became the head of the army after the death of its first commander, Felipe Samuel Magaya, in October 1966. Also, when Felimo's founder and first president, Eduardo Mondlane, was assassinated by a parcel bomb on February 3, 1969, Marshall was elected as Felimo president in 1970. Like the late Mondlane, Marshall identified himself with Marxism, Leninism, and under his leadership, these positions became central to Frelimo, which evolved from a broad front into a more Marxist party. During his role, the new commander of the Portuguese army in Mozambique, General Calza de Ariaga, challenged the Frelimo, and Machal reacted by shifting the focus of war in the western province of Tete. The expansion of Frelimo in many regions led to panic amongst the Portuguese, on April 25, 1974, Portuguese officers, tired of fighting three unwinnable wars in Africa, overthrew the government in Lisbon in an almost bloodless coup. Nobody came onto the streets to defend Prime Minister Marcelo Caetano, and within 24 hours, the armed forces movement was in full control of Portugal. Frelimo's immediate warning was that there was no such thing as democratic colonialism, and that nobody should imagine that Mozambicans would tolerate Portuguese rule just because there had been a change of government in Lisbon. Frelimo's fears were well-founded as the MFA, 
allowed General Antonio de Spinola to become the first post-coup president. He had been commander of the Portuguese forces in Guinea-Bissau, then Portuguese Guinea, and was believed to be deeply implicated in the assassination of the Guinean nationalist leader, Amilcar Cabral. Spinola had no intention of letting Mozambique and Angola go, as he dreamt of a Lusophone Commonwealth run from Lisbon and wanted a referendum on independence, which Marshall rejected. After several fruitless discussions between Frelimo and the new Portuguese government, Marshall refused to give the Portuguese the ceasefire they wanted, which made the Portuguese soldiers drop interest to fight. More serious talks between the Lisbon government and Frelimo resulted in an agreement signed in Lusaka on September 7, 1974 which agreed to transfer full power to Frelimo with a date for independence set for June 25, 1975. A transitional government was set up and Marshall continued to run Frelimo from Tanzania. His triumphant homecoming was interrupted at the beach resort of Tofo in Inhambane province for a meeting of the Frelimo Central Committee, which drew up Mozambique's first constitution with the outline for the one-party, socialist state Frelimo favored. Frelimo was constitutionally the leading force in Mozambican society, and the president of Frelimo would automatically be the president of Mozambique. On June 25, 1975, Marshall proclaimed, quote, the total and complete independence of Mozambique and its constitution into the People's Republic of Mozambique, end quote. Marshall's government moved quickly to bring key areas under state control, nationalizing all lands, health, and education institutions. In February 1977, at its third Congress, Frelimo declared that it was now a Marxist-Leninist party dedicated to the building of socialism based on the Worker-Peasant Alliance. The Congress re-elected Marshall as president of Frelimo and thus automatically as president of the Republic. In 1978, elections were held again, and since this was a one-party state, opposition candidates were sometimes rejected when people complained of offenses, ranging from wife-beating, drunkenness, or a suspected treason. Frelimo faced a hostile environment, with the white minority governments of Iron Smith's Rhodesia and apartheid South Africa on Mozambique's borders. In March 1976, Marshall's government implemented United Nations sanctions against the Smith government and closed the borders with Rhodesia. In retaliation, Smith Central Intelligence Organization CIO, recruited dissatisfied Mozambicans and former Portuguese settlers and helped set up an anti-Frelimo movement. As part of the measures accompanying the new Frelimo government, Marshall introduced re-education centers in which petty criminals political opponents, and alleged antisocial elements such as prostitutes were imprisoned, often without trial. These were later described by foreign observers as infamous centers of torture and death, and it is estimated that 30,000 inmates died in these camps. Rhodesian Bush War Frelimo had long-standing links with Zimbabwean nationalist movements. Even during the Independence War, guerrillas of Zanla, or the Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army, and the armed wing of ZANU, the Zimbabwe African National Union, were able to operate from frelimo held areas in Tete province, into northern areas of Rhodesia. After the implementation of sanctions against the Rhodesian government, the entire length of the border was now available for nationalist incursions into Rhodesia. ZANU leader Robert Mugabe Released from Salisbury Prison, Rhodesia, in 1974, made his way into Mozambique the following year. Initially, Marshall was suspicious of the apparent coup within ZANU that had brought Mugabe to power, and he was effectively rusticated to the central city of Kelimane, where he taught English. Tired of the divisions within Zimbabwean nationalism, Marshall sponsored an alternative to both ZANU and its rival ZAPU, called the Zimbabwean People's Army. Zipa, but it soon turned out that the dominant force within Zipa was Zanla guerrillas, who had never abandoned their loyalty to Zanu and to Mugabe. 
Marshall accepted the reality that the people doing most of the fighting in Zimbabwe were Zanla and involved the British government in a failed attempt to resolve issues. But a small minority of white commercial farmers still held most of the country's fertile farmland. Marshall was also fully aware of the dangerous ethnic divisions in Zimbabwe, with ZANU drawing most of its support from the Shona majority and ZAPU from the minority Ndebele people. Civil War In 1977, a rebel army known as Renamo launched a rebellion, backed by Rhodesia, plunging the country into civil war. Following the collapse of Smith's government, the rebel force began to receive backing from South Africa. Mozambique, on the other hand, was accused of harboring military bases of the African National Congress, the ANC. However, an attack on June 30, 1981 from South African commandos made Marshall to throw down the gauntlet, and at the rally in Maputo's Independence Square, he embraced ANC leader Oliver Tambo and declared, quote, they want to come here and commit murder, so we say, let them come, let all the racists come, let the South Africans come, but let them be clear that the war will end in Pretoria. With situations on both sides only deteriorating in military and economically, Frelimo was driven to give the apartheid government what it had wanted, a non-aggression pact. On March 16, 1984, on a railway carriage in the known man's land between South Africa and Mozambique, Marshall and South African President P.W. Botha signed the Nkomati Accord on non-aggression and good neighborliness. The deal expressed in the agreement was extremely simple. South Africa would drop its support for Renamo in exchange for Mozambique dropping support for the ANC. But they both failed to honor the terms of this accord as Marshall did not expel various ANC members from his territory, and South African support for Renamo did not stop. Fatal Air Crash and Investigations On 19th October 1986, Marshall attended a summit in Bala, Zambia, called to put pressure on Zairean dictator Mobutu Sese Seko over his support for Angolan opposition movement UNITA. Although the Zambian authorities invited Marshall to stay in Bala overnight, he insisted on returning to Maputo. He had a meeting scheduled for the following morning, at which he intended to reshuffle the leadership of the armed forces. That night, the plane Marshall was traveling in crashed into a hillside on Buzini, just inside South Africa, killing Marshall and 33 others, but nine people sitting at the back of the plane survived. The Morgo Commission set up by the South African government, but which included high-level international representation, investigated the incident and concluded that the accident was caused by pilot error. Despite the acceptance of its findings by the International Civil Aviation Organization, the report was rejected by the Mozambican and Soviet governments, with several conspiracy theories emerging till date. Marshall had a very short and impactful political life but he also had a very interesting social life. Upon his passing, he left several children, baby mamas, wife, and first lady to mourn him. Marshall had children with two women before getting married. One was a local girl, Sorita Chaikomo, with whom he had three kids, and Irene Bukewe, a nurse he met while working at the Miguel Bombada Hospital, with whom he had a daughter. Finally, in May 1969, he married Josina Abiata Muthimba, who was one of the earliest recruits to the women's detachment of the guerrilla army. But one son later, he lost her to a terminal disease. Marshall's second wife, Grasa Simbine, joined Frelimo in 1973 after graduating in modern languages from Lisbon University. She and Marshall were married three months after independence, in September 1975, and they had two children. In 1998, 12 years after Samora Michelle's death, Grasa Michelle married Nelson Mandela, President of South Africa, thus becoming the only woman to have been First Lady of two countries. There you have it, the stories. That was the history of the first President of Mozambique, Samora Michelle. Thanks for watching this video, and if you did enjoy this video, do all to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.